Hello everyone, this is the Mining Geologist and I am back again with another very exciting and very informative tutorial. So this tutorial is both really simple so anyone can follow along. We're not going to do any Python scripting. We're not going to do any complicated things in QGIS. It's going to be just basic QGIS manipulation. But also, I was looking online and I couldn't find a single blog post or YouTube video or whatever that covers what I'm about to show you in this video. So even though that it is really simple, but if you stick to the end of the video, I'm going to show you some amazing application of this method that I'm about to show you. So let's begin with a basic buffer. So in, in QGIS or any GIS softwares, uh, we have like points, uh, lines or polylines and polygons, and we can create buffers around these shapes. So for example, in the points here, the point layer that I have, I have like a bunch of points. And let's say that I wanna see like a buffer of 10 meters around these points. So what I can do is I can go to here and search for buffer sorry uh, buffer and i can use the buffer tool we've already covered this tool in a, a different tutorial in which we use the simple tool to create epid designer so if you're interested in that you can go and check it out in uh, my channel and let's say uh, i have this point layer here and i want to create a distance or a buffer it's going to be like a circle around this point with a buffer of 10 meters so that's really simple and I click on run, close, and basically I will have the uh, 10 meters buffer around all of these points. Now, let's make this a little bit complicated and let's say that I am interested in a uh, different or a variable buffer size for each one of these features. So in the past, there was a tool inside the QGIS and you can use that in which you can select the uh, from the attribute table you can select an attribute that you can use that as a buffer so for example if you look at the attribute table you can see uh, that i've created an attribute called distance and i can use this one to set the buffer distance for each one of these features okay so it's still possible with the same buffer tool all you have to do is instead of using the distance you can go to this option here and use edit and then you can go to fields and values to access all the different uh, fields inside that specific uh, layer. And in our case, we have only that distance. I can double click on this one. And if I click on OK, which means now that this distance is going to use that attribute to assign the buffer distance for each one of these features. If I run this now and close, you can see that these points, they were assigned different buffer distances based on that distance value inside the attribute. Now, so far, this is simple and you can do this with just a couple of clicks inside QGIS. Now, I was interested in this specific thing, but no one is covering that, which is what if we have one single feature like a polygon with just one polygon and we are interested in creating a variable buffer distance but for one feature so there should be for example a 10 meter buffer in this side and let's say a 50 meter buffer in this side this specific thing no one is covering it online or i haven't seen anyone that can show you how you can do this. And if you stick to the end of the video, I'm gonna show you exactly how you can do this in QGIS without coding. What I'm about to show you in this video might look very simple. And some of you might be asking themselves, where can I use this method will if you stick to the end of the video i'm going to show you some cool examples where you can use uh, this uh, method that i'm about to show you well 
As you've seen in the intro, we created different buffers for different features. That's really simple, but in the case in which we have just one feature, that might be a little bit complicated since we cannot use the attribute table to assign different values because we have just one feature, so there will be just one value. So let's say that we want to assign a 10 meter buffer from this side and a 50 meter buffer from this side. So that's not possible with the polygon because it is just one single feature. But in the end, a polygon is just a closed polyline. And what is a polyline? It's just a bunch of points. And we know in QGIS it is possible to go from points to polylines and from polylines to polygons. And this brings us to the idea of converting that polyline that polygon to its original you know uh, components which are the points assigning the data to that points and then converting that back to a polygon so this idea might look a little bit complicated for you but then some of you might be confused like if we're going to convert that to a polygon in the end so we're going to end up with just one feature which is going to hold one single value then how can we create a buffer around that well there's this secret geometry in QGIS that not everyone knows about it and it's very helpful in these kind of situations so let's go step by step until we get to that uh, really cool trick so the first step is to convert this polygon to its components, which are the points or the vertices. To do that, it's really simple. We go to Vector and then to Geometry Tool and then Extract Vertices. This script here will allow you to extract the vertices of a polygon or a polyline. So we're going to get to these first, these initial components or the vertices of that polygon. So let's go and run this and really quickly we are going to have the different vertices that make that polygon now if we go to the attribute table you'll notice that we've got these bunch of uh, fields created but we don't need them so let's go and edit this one and add a new uh, attribute or field so we're going to call this distance and let's leave it as an integer uh, as it is and click on OK. Then I'm going to close the attribute table. And like we mentioned in the example, we said that we want these or this part to have a 10 meter buffer and this part to have a 50 meter buffer. OK, so let's go to the attribute table again with these selected. You'll notice that they are also selected here. So I can choose the field distance, this distance here. So I can choose the field distance and I want to edit this one. So let me go and choose that again, distance. And I want to assign 10 meter to all of these. So I'm going to assign 10 here and then click on update selected. And they're all going to be assigned 10. Now I can do the same thing for the other points by assigning 50 or since in our case, they don't have that much of points, so I'm going to assign them manually in here and go and hit save. So I close this one and I click here to end select all of the different points that were selected. And now you can see that we've assigned a distance of 10 here and a distance of 50 here. Now the cool geometry that I was talking about, it's called M. So what is M? Let me show you that in action. So if I select one of these vertices, uh, not with this tool, but with the identification tool, you'll notice in the derived, which are the attributes, the geometry attributes stored inside that specific feature, you'll notice that we have X, Y, and we have Z, and we have another one, a mysterious uh, geometry called M. So basically X and Y and Z, these are going to define the, that geometry, how it looks in 3D space. So we have the X and Y and the Z is zero. So we have like uh, that point sitting at an elevation of uh, zero. But what is the M? 
M, you can call that measurement, which is an additional uh, geometry that QGIS uses in case you want to assign a different, let's say, uh, value other than X, Y, Z to that specific feature. So for example, you can assign grade values to these different points. So we'll have like X, Y, and Z and a grade value inside that feature. Or you can assign temperature. You can assign whatever you want to that M value. So some of you might be thinking, why not assigning these to uh, attributes, for example? Well, the problem with attributes is that they are accessible from the attribute table only. So for example, if I have if I assign different attributes to these ones, so you can see that I have like 10, 10, 50, 50, and so on. And then if I convert these uh, to a single polyline that joins all of these points, so we'll have just one feature. So what do you think is going to be assigned to the distance? It's not going to be assigned anything uh, that we can use because we're going to have just one feature. But what about the geometries? So if we make that polyline as a 3D polyline, so even though that it is just one feature, we can have multiple elevations at that single polyline. Same thing for M or the measurement. So if we assign different M values to these points and then join them as a polyline, that polyline is going to have different M values at each vertices. So that's the trick. So now what we need to do is to set the M value for each one of these points. And we need to use that distance field that we've just created. And for that, there's a simple trick. There's this script here that's called set M value. And with the same way we've used the buffer in the past, so we can set a fixed M value, but in our case, we are interested in a variable M value because we're going to use that later as the buffer. So we go to here again, edit, and we are going to use that field uh, and values, and we're going to use that distance that we've created, and we're going to use that as the M value to be assigned. So if I click on run and close, I will have this new um, layer created for me called M added. Now, if I go to these and look at these inside derived, you'll notice that the M is not zero anymore. So we have like 10 in here. If I click on this one, the M here should be assigned a 50. So cool. Now that M is part of the geometry. Now, if I join all of these points with a polyline, that polyline is going to inherit that M value because it is part of the geometry not part of the attribute table. So let's go and do exactly that. So let's search for path, which is points to path. We're going to create a path around these points. And we're going to hit that create closed paths. And I'm sure that you guessed why, because we're going to convert that closed polyline to a polygon later. So let's go and run this and click on close. Now, if I hide this one, and let me just show you in the attribute table. In the attribute table, you will notice that we lost all of these distances. And this is what I was talking about. So we have just one feature again, and we cannot assign multiple values to this uh, feature, like multiple distances, because it is just one single path. The good news that this polyline inherited the X, Y, and Z coordinates in these uh, different vertices and that M value that we assigned. That's really cool. Now what we can do is we go to the next tool, which is, let's go search for variable. It's variable width buffer by M value. So look at this now. Now we can choose that path that we've created and this buffer tool is going to use the M value to create the buffers. So this segment is basically saying that if I'm going to create a, a buffer in this area, so instead of using just one point, I'm gonna create like 16 in here, and then create an arc around these to make the shape smooth. In our case, we're not interested in that, but you can use this uh, in case you want a smooth 
um, uh, polygon. So I'm going to use two and then I'm going to click on run. And look at this, guys. Isn't this just amazing? I've created a buffer around this polygon with 10 meters from this side and 50 meters from this side. So that's the trick. And for everyone who've been uh, who've watched the full video and is uh, enjoying what I'm showing in this video, uh, you can use this to create mine designs. Yes, I've used this exact same technique, but I ended up creating a tool from scratch because I couldn't figure out how to do this maybe in a QGIS. And I created this tool. Let me show you. So basically, this one is going to calculate the normal vectors at each one of these vertices and then uh, assign a variable buffer uh, distance. So I used this one to create that waste stamp modeler that I showed you in the free mind design tools. So it's very, 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 very useful. So you can easily create mind designs with different geotechnical parameters using this tool. So for example, let's say that this is the base of a pit design and then and then uh, this is this one let's say it's sitting at an elevation of zero and then the polygon we can assign an elevation of 10 for example so we have like a bench height of 10. Now with these distances it's going to create different slopes so the slope in this area is not going to be the same in this area. So with a combination of that video in which I showed you how you can create a simple pit design tool in QGIS if you use this method, now you can also assign geotechnical parameters to that pit. And not only that, with the same exact technique, if you know how to do it, you can create ramps. So if you can assign, you know, different um, buffers and you say that this the ramp is going to start from this point. So basically the buffer in this area is going to be zero and then based on this distance and the uh, bench height and the different angles for the ramp and for the bench you can do like with simple math you can calculate the buffer distance for that ramp to be at this angle you can calculate the buffer distance in here and then the buffer distance in here and then the buffer distance in here and this is going to create a ramp for you and i use the same exact thing but in python and was able for you who are following me on linkedin i showed you in the past how i created a pit designer in qgis uh, sorry in python in pure python and i used exactly the same exact technique but now with this method in qgis it's really simple and maybe in the next upcoming days if you're interested i might show you how to do exactly that in qgis so if you're one of the uh, followers that enjoy my videos and watch it till the end, please comment down and uh, show me or tell me how you are going to use this method and if you like it or not, or if you want to uh, see more videos like this one. And I really appreciate you watching the full video. And with that being said, see you in the next video.